Right. I can talk a little bit about security at a high level. Um, in some respects, we've done very well with VMS. In some other respects, at the moment, we're kind of behind the curve. Um, that mostly has to do with keeping up with present-day standards. Um, there's, you know, there, there are some theoretical models for security that, at, at a very high level, um, do a pretty good job of describing what you need to, uh, to accomplish. And the, the basic theoretical model of a secure system is you have, you have a body of data that you, that you want to protect. You have a set of users who you don't trust. In between, you have a secure system, and the, 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 the name in the theory is it's called the reference monitor, um, which simply means that this system mediates all user access to your data. And it has um, a body of data, which is um, the access control database, which is simply some kind of statement of, of your security policy, meaning who's allowed to do what. And then there's also an audit log, uh, which is just a record of who did what. Um, and it's got a couple of basic principles. Um, one, the reference monitor mediates accesses to the data so that there's, there's no way around it. And the security, mon uh, I'm sorry, the, the reference monitor is tamper-proof and correct. Right, and likewise, the the um, the access control database and the audit log are also tamper correct um, proof. And final requirement is has to be correct. And that's it. That's uh, you know that's 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 all of what security is about. Um, and and of course, it's the it has to be correct which is the huge pile of details where the devil lies. Um, basically what, you know, so, so from a practical point of view, um, building a secure system mostly involves building a bug-free system. It's as simple as that. Um, I, you know, I, I used to give a talk on how to write secure code in VMS because we, you know, we, Obviously, um, you know, VMS is a large body of code. A lot of this code is trusted. Uh, in other words, it's security critical. We had a lot of people working on it. And some of the principles are not entirely obvious. Um, and so this was, this was always how I started to talk out. I described the reference monitor model. I tell you, okay, that's, you know, your code has to be bug free. End of talk, go home. Um, <laughs> But then, you know, then we went on and, well, okay, what are, you know, what are some of the real pitfalls um, um, in, in particular in VMS that can cause um, security bugs? And um, a lot of it has to do with distinguishing trusted inputs from untrusted inputs. In other words, you know, what, what information can you depend on? What information has to be very carefully validated? Um, one of the ways that you can get into trouble, uh, for example, is to, um, you know, look, is to take user inputs, validate them once, and then use the original user inputs as is. Um, one of the things that can happen in VMS, uh, which is not true of Unix, or at least didn't used to be true of Unix, is that the contents of memory can change over time. Um, and in fact, we had, you know, we had a couple of, the, they're called asynchronous attacks, where someone would call um, a, you know, a security critical uh, system service, and they'd present a set of arguments that looked fine, um, and at the same time, they had a read I.O. outstanding on the memory that contained those inputs. Um, and so somewhere along the line, after, after the service had validated the inputs, those values would change in memory because the I.O. would complete. Um, 
right? And so one of the things that you learned is you don't ever refetch user arguments. What you have to do is you have to make copies of them to a space that the user can't touch, validate the copies, and then use the copies. Um, another, uh, one of, one of uh, VMS's weak points um, in the past um, was uh, logical name attacks. Um, this is a feature in the VMS file system um, which really has no counterpart in Unix or Windows. Um, it's a very, very useful and powerful feature where you use a logical name as part of a file name and you can redirect that by redefining the logical name, uh, you know, to, comparing it to Unix, you know, a logical name looks it, it's it's very much like um, all right, God, what uh, the um, environment variable is 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 the word I'm looking for, right? Okay, you know, the, the, and and you 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 typically define them from shell script, from DCL command procedure, whatever, um, and so with logical names, you can redirect a file name. Um, and of course, if you have a security critical piece of code that wants to use a file name to access something that's security critical, um, well, you better not be able to let the user redirect it. So, I mean, you know, going way back to VMS version one, um, yeah, somebody figured out very quickly, hey, you know, if, if, if you define a logical for the authorization file, guess what, you move, right? So, I mean, you know, we've, we've solved most of that with, with, with a bunch of different mechanisms. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and we solved mo uh, most of those pretty early on um, so that the, you know, security critical subsystems are protected from user logical name attack. Um, <clears throat> one of the um, one of the outliers, one of the one of the later ones that was found in fix. I think this was fixed somewhere right around 1990 or you know 1990, 1991 in that time time frame. And we we referred to that one as the Novosibirsk bug. Uh, <clears throat> and the reason, right? That that was where it came from, uh, and it was where it. It was very typical in the way the, 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 the security bugs would, uh, would arrive. That one, you know, one of us in the kernel group would get an email, either you know, typically from, from a user we knew or in some cases from an ex-VMS engineer who was now working somewhere out in the world. This, this came from one of our engineers who was now working at CERN in Geneva. And so he sent us this email, you know, with your, 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 your typical uh-oh kind of subject line that says, I think you guys had better have a look at this. Um, and yeah, right, and attached was, was, was this email that basically said, uh, you, know, you know, attention, the following program breaks VMS security. Um, and yeah, the, bu the bug had something to do with um, yeah, the use of logical names in mapping global sections, and this, it was a very obscure detail that we had missed in the past because it was it was kind of outside the normal realm of the logical name attacks, and you know, actually being able to use it productively, um, and it came from this guy named Mikhail B uh, Balin at the Soviet Institute of Nuclear Physics in Novosibirsk. Um, so another guy and I looked at it, and it took, it took us about an hour to figure out what the bug was, and it took a few more hours to come up with a patch. Um, and, um, and we thought, well, okay, we want to get this bug fixed. Um, and so it took a few tries to actually get get an email address for them because it, this had come through one of the old X25 networks. We eventually got a connection to him. We exchanged a few emails, and we, we wanted to know what version of VMS he was running so that we could give give him a correct patch. And I still remember his his classic reply. You have to remember, right? This this was like a year or two after the Soviet breakup. Um, he said, unfortunately, we are unlicensed VMS site. 
This is owing to historical reasons like Cold War. <laughs> But we did get him a pad. We, do, yeah, we did finally learn right, what VMS version. Yeah, and, it, yeah, and he, was, he was running it on a Robotron 8000 or something. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this was not our concern. Basically, as far as we were concerned, he was a VMS customer, and we, yeah, we, were, we were going to get him a patch and get the system fixed. Um, so at this point, um, yeah, we, we are mostly in good shape. Yeah, certainly the kernel, the kernel is in really good shape. We've taken on some risks with a lot of the open source code that, you know, that shows up with the internet tools. Um, and a, you know, a, lot of this, a lot of this code is particularly vulnerable to buffer overrun attacks because of a design characteristic in Unix that I surely hope that Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson will roast in hell forever for. Um, and that's the interface called GetS, um, which is, you know, that, that Unix service is basically a buffer overrun waiting to happen because the, right, the arguments to it are basically, are, you know, you're asking for inf to receive information. What you give it is the address of a buffer and there's no length, um, and the length, you know, the maximum length of the data that you will receive is determined by agreement between you and the sender. Um, and so, if the sender is not trusted, they could send you anything. And if it's larger than your buffer, then it goes off the end of the buffer, and it overwrites your stack, and you know, exciting and interesting things happen from there. <coughs> So um, and yeah you know, and you know, VMS the, the 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 VMS basic code that you know that right that we wrote is essentially immune from this stuff because we didn't do services that way, which basically means all right here's where I want you to put the data and here's how big it is and don't you dare put any more data in it. right and the service enforces the length and you know and 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 if the data unit that you're receiving this is like, you know, like um, if, if it's a record, um, if it's larger than that, then the service will come back and tell you, hey, I, yeah, sorry, it didn't fit. Um, the, you know, the one thing that, that, that VMS can do, you know, and has done, um, that makes life a little better for, uh, you know, potentially buggy, uh, like web server code and stuff like that, is that we usually run the stuff in an untrusted process. So the worst that an outside attacker can do is to crash the web server. It can't hurt the base operating system itself because that's all, you know, it's, it, it, it's encapsulated. Well, okay, right, I'm tr <clears throat> right, trying to think, okay, what other, okay, what are some of the other things, okay, I'm thinking in, in terms of, yeah, how to write, right, how to write secure, privileged subsystems, I mean, right, a, right, a lot of it, right, a lot of it has to do with argument validation and just logical consistency. Um, and I remember we had, we had a bug at some point where an unprivileged user could overwrite um, a global section that was owned by the system. Um, and that had to do with some of the um, some of the, 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 the different options that were available in the uh, right in the map global section system service. Um, and there's a there's a mode called copy on reference, which effectively means okay, I want to map this thing, the, you know, the, the, this object out here. But if I but the moment I touch it. The, the, the pages become my own and they become disconnected from the original source of the data. Okay, and so that only requires read access to this thing, you know, because you're never going to modify it. And then, um, there were, I'm, right, I, I'm not sure I can put together all of the details, but ba base, basically you call map global section on, you know, on, 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 on some system global section, you specified copy on reference, 
and then yeah, the, you 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 passed in a conflicting argument as part of the call, and the the service was not validating the arguments consistently, and so what happened was, it um, right. It did a read-only protection check based on your copy on reference parameter, but then when you know when it actually did the mapping, it was mapping the section for write. Um, and so you ended up actually getting write access to this global section. And this is, yeah, the uh, right, the particular section that this affected was the um, the job controller queue. And the right, the end result of that was that you could submit a batch job with a delayed start, then run this little hack um, that mapped the, queue, the the global section that the queues were stored in, change the username in the job, right, and then have the job run under a different username. So again, you know, it's it's one of these classic examples of of being able to tamper with the reference monitor. Um, because of an inconsistency in argument validation. So right, all, all of these things amount to um, interesting and creative ways of putting bugs in the system. Yeah, because they're right. The, ba the basic concepts of, of, of security architecture are, are, are very simple. I mean, another area that I, I, I did do a bunch of theoretical work in distributed security, yeah, network security, um, and we we developed um, a lot of the basic concepts of certificates, certification authorities, um, cryptographically based signatures, and stuff like that. Um, that did at least when I was involved with it, that did not get far enough to actually produce any product, but a lot of that, a lot of that information went out to, you know, the, the greater internet community and has ultimately resulted in, you know, a, a lot of the security mechanisms that we have now.